Jesus, we thank you for your presence. Father, we love you. We know there's none above you. So therefore, we exalt you this morning. We thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name. I want to talk to you today about a very, very important topic that's going to challenge you. It's going to challenge each and every one of us because we're not aware that each one of us can be deceived. Your life is very important to you, but there is a devil, a real enemy, that has been working on human beings for the last 2,000 years or so. Well, more than 2,000 years, actually 4,000 years. Maybe 6,000 years. 6,000. Yeah, he's been working on human beings for 6,000 years. So he knows how to deceive. And so I wrote this, and I want to say this in the beginning, and I hope you can hear it. Somebody said, my ear is completely on. My ear is completely on. God is not moved by church exodus. God's not moved by church exodus, neither shall you. People are supposed to leave the church because they don't belong in it. Okay, hold on, their feelings got hurt. Maybe I should say it here. What is this, Central America, South America? People that don't belong in church have to leave. See, it hurts your feeling because you think everybody belongs in church. No, everybody don't belong in church. Neither does everybody belong in heaven. If that was the case, Jesus would have never died. So we have to understand that the church is heaven on earth. The Bible says that the, the, the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal that God knows them that are his. I'm going to stay here because you have to understand that people <laughs> leaving church, not this, not a building, not where you congregate, but the body of Christ is the sign that Jesus is on his way back. Amen. See, many times you think because churches are full, Jesus is coming back. That's not, the Bible never said that. The Bible never said when your church is filled, Jesus will be back. No. He said when there's a falling away, when people start leaving, Wow. Then shall he return. See, because I don't know about you, but sometimes you don't want certain people in your house, so you wait till they leave. Wow. Wow. You ever call home in advance and say, who's there? And then such and such, Uncle Bobby and them, you'd be like this, all right, call me when he's about to leave. You know it's true. You know there's certain people that come to your house that you don't want to be in that house when they get there. So Jesus knows Everyone that's not a part of his family, when they're going to depart. Yes. But you're moved by that. Mm. See, you, you get moved when you see people leaving. You start trying to figure out, how can I get them to stay if God can't get them to stay? Oh, why do you want to get them to stay? Oh, that's like having a rattlesnake leave your house and be like, hey, little rattlesnake, take some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> See, but we get moved because we, we're, we're flesh. We're human. We think that we need people. No, we need God. Yeah. See, God is not moved by church exodus. Neither shall you. It's a sign of Jesus' return. Wow. Jesus gave a parable of the five foolish virgins. Mm. Soon as they ran out of oil, <laughs> he showed up. Mm. He didn't come when they was full. Right. He waited to they that needed to run out, ran out. Wow. See, it's hard for you to understand that, but everybody don't belong there. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why you need to recognize, I'm glad I'm in. Amen. Isn't it an exclusive club? Of course it is. It's covered by the blood of Jesus. Right. You can't get in without a ticket. Right. Five wise virgins, what? Had their lamps filled with oil. And he didn't come at 6 o'clock. He came at midnight. When everybody else should be asleep. These five virgins were ready. They heard the call. They said, the bridegroom cometh. And they went out to meet him. So God gave me a word today. Well, last night. Well, yesterday. Preparing this church. I can't prepare every church. But I can hope that this church is prepared. Amen. And in order for you to be prepared for the return of the Lord, you have to know that you can be deceived. Mm. Yes. Uh -huh. You have the ability to believe a lie. Yes. Yes. 
And there's only three things that's going to preserve you against that. Number one. Say, somebody say number one. Number one. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Number, two, number two. The Word of God. Number three. The love of God. If you don't have the Holy Ghost of God, if you don't have the Word of God, if you don't have the love of God, you can and possibly will be deceived. Because how are you going to know what Satan is saying to you without the word of God? Yeah. How are you going to know when the seducing spirit is on you without the Holy Ghost? Yeah. How are you going to know the love of God when you don't know how to sacrifice for anyone yourself? Yeah. Two hand clips. One from the north, one from the south. I'm doing all right. The churches in the book of Revelation, they had issues and so does us. So do we. So I want to go real quick to Revelation, I believe it's chapter 2. Just bear with me because I ran out of paper in my house, so I had to go find messages and record on top of them. You didn't cry, it must be the Presbyterians in here. Go to... Uh, Revelation chapter 2. How many don't have a problem with money? Then go to Re Revelation chapter 3. Thank you for waiting for me with your patience. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the church, or unto the angel, now angel is messenger, many times it is uh, also the pastor. Now don't, don't, Act like Della Reese in here. But I'm the messenger of this church. You call me shepherd, but the spirit world calls me angel. They call me messenger. You see, angels see me as a messenger. They see me as the one bringing the message. I'm the messenger. I'm over this church. Me and my wife are over this church. So we have a light. We're a messengers with a light. And the Bible considers our light our candlestick. Every church has a candlestick. Every church has a messenger. Every church, the, you call them shepherds, you call them pastors, but the spirit world sees them as light. You know, if you were in a dark place and you had a light, would you walk away from the light? You would walk toward the light. So we're messengers with light. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spit. They use a different word. They say, I will spew you out of my mouth. Now, in the next couple of verses, he's going to begin to tell them how did they get lukewarm. In our day, in our society, I have to warn you, we are so money hungry. The way society is, is if you don't have money, you can't pay bills. I've seen people sad because they didn't have money. And I've seen people in societies that didn't have money and they were all okay with it. See, when there's a spirit around, a spirit will dictate how you feel. And if you don't have money and you have the spirit of God, you can still rejoice. Amen. Anybody here? Amen. And you notice that when you couldn't pay a bill, your spirit went down. Because there's a seducing spirit. Just because you can't pay a bill, what made that bill your God? Amen. Why are you down? Why are you cast down on my soul? It must mean that that paying bills to you is God. And I wrote this. Somebody said he he gonna he gonna hit us with a hammer. And don't say don't repeat this. If you be lifted up, you'll draw all men unto you. You know it's the truth, right? If you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you, right? Look at look at our society. Everybody's gotta take a look at men. I got the latest handbag, the latest 
hairstyle, got the latest jacket. Look at me. Look at me. I'm lifted up. See, and we don't realize that that is a seducing spirit. There's nothing wrong with you looking good, but when you are doing it so they can look up at you, so that you're lifted, you left your purpose. Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And many times in our churches, we don't have people bragging on their holiness. We have people bragging on their debt. Praise God, I just got a mortgage. Ha -ha. I just got into debt for 30 years. Praise the Lord. How about you? Whoa, glory to God. I just got a 72 month bill on my car. Hallelujah. We brag about being in debt. See, we lift up being in debt. Instead of Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw them in unto me. Anybody here? So we're in a seducing society. We don't want to see it like that, but we have been seduced by this age to get in debt. And the Bible says that the borrower is slave to the lender. And we don't have a problem being a slave to the lender as long as Jackie Jojo compliments us about our car. We can't pay for next month. Are we not in a seducing society? Of course we are. They will, the banks will tell you how much you can borrow. And your brain won't even think, how much can I afford to pay? And you end up borrowing over your head because you're in a seducing society. Anybody still here? Am I in America? Could I leave? And we don't realize that this is a part of this age to seduce you to get your life above the life of Christ so that you're doing everything to pay your bills. You spend more time on your life than on his life. Because if he is lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. But if you are lifted up, you'll draw all men unto you. I'm not expecting amen to three, three old me's will be fine. Because we all do it. We are human. We're human and we're in an age. Okay, how many people know Spanish? Un peo. Everybody's in, the umbra everybody's in the elevator and then there's a un peo. Everybody's going to look around and once they find the guilty person, they'll be like, you infected us all. Because you're in that elevator, you're a part of that age. It is not your fault that you were born in this age. But you got to recognize, I got to get the smell out of my system. Just because I'm saved right now, I'm in fact. Thank you, three of you. Because you're saved right now, you are infected with the spirit of the Laodicean church. Definitely here in America. Where everything is based on how much you make. Y'all here? Now what verse did I stop on? Verse 15, one more time. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot, not too, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art, what? Lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Anybody here ever picked up a hot coffee, a hot cup of coffee, had your little, what do they call these, salt, salt, salivary, what do they call them? Salivary glands already. You liquefied your 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 mouth so you know it's gonna be hot and some lukewarm coffee came you up. You spit it out like it was the devil himself. Or you was like parched and you was like salivating again and you grab some a cold iced tea and it's lukewarm. What's to it? It got in the body, but you got it right out. Many people are in the body about to be spit out. You can't be a part of the body and not be spit out. That's why you have to understand today, if you, are, if you don't know exactly how you're walking with God, you might get spit out. 
I'm human and I don't like everybody. God loves everybody, but he doesn't like everybody. Actually, in one of the in the church of Ephesians, he said, I hate the doctrine of the liquidations. He hate what they do. So you think he likes them? He loves them, but he definitely don't like them. You know who you like? You want to know who you like? Anybody like you? Like means I'm assimilating with you. I can't choose who I love. I have to love you, but to like you, no, I'm not going to assimilate with everybody. That's right. My, I, my likes are my choice. I have my own desires. I like my wife's look, but I love my wife. So if she changed her look to something I don't like, it ain't going to change my love. But it'll change my life. It'll go from this. Anybody here? Anybody ever dated anybody and said, why do you do that? They were happy to see you the way you were, but then you altered. So when we don't walk a certain way, don't think God's going to like that. He doesn't like everything we do. And if you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out. I say, but, I'm, I, but I need to be spit proofed. <laughs> so you got to be bold. You got to be bold to stay in. Amen. You know, when you're greedy, you don't throw up. <clears throat> I'm not going to eat later. You hold that thing in. That went over six of your heads. So I used to be greedy. I said, I couldn't afford to throw up. <clears throat> was no dinner after that. Verse 16, ready? So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Like I said earlier, God's not moved. He is not moved at all when people leave the church. And if you're moved by it, that's not God. That's right. They have to go. And that's what he said. Because thou sayest, because you say I'm rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor and blind. Wow. See, having money is not to get you to say I don't need anything. Right, right, right now. Having money means I can I can pay my bills. I don't need to, I don't want to get to a place where I say I don't need anything. Because I I'm not there. I need to stay on fire. I don't need to be greedy or covetous, but no, 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 no. Having my needs met is not my goal. That's not my goal. My goal is to glorify him at any moment. Because I get lukewarm the moment I say I have need of nothing. Because that means I left him. I have a daughter. I don't know where she at. And um, she gets cold. And so I, you know, got a, anybody got a thermostat in the house? So what I do is I, I sneak downstairs real quick, pump that thing up so that she starts to melt. See, I prepare for her. See, she can't, she can't do it because she's freezing in the, under the blanket. God prepared for you. There's some things you cannot do, but what he has prepared for you, you got to roll with it. You can't act like money is everything. All money can do is pay bills. Ask those men that jumped out of the buildings during the, the, um, the crash when money fell. But this church says, but God says to them, because you say I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and you don't even know. That's the seducing, prevailing spirit to get you so filled with stuff yeah. or to get you to have nothing and covet it but my neighbor has it and the seducing spirit is getting you to think that gain is godliness the bible said that they have fallen from their faith assuming that gain was godliness you're in this society where preachers make you think that they're blessed because they have stuff. 
and what it does to you that don't have stuff, I must be cursed. See, the seducing spirit to alter your perception of who you really are. We're in that time. We're in that time. And without, a, without the Holy Ghost, without the Word of God, and without the love of God, you will fall to this seduction. A woman wants to date. She see all her other friends dating, right? And all her mother made her was a sackcloth outfit. But she see all the other girls wearing super tight latex. <laughs> a seducing spirit's going to talk to her and say, you know what? Get you some super tight latex and you'll get a date. Anybody hear me? It's just true. That's how it is. In our churches, we're all going to be seduced to fall away. There are churches that have said that the gifts of the Spirit has ceased. How can you be a church without the gifts of the Spirit when the Spirit of God runs the church? There is a seduction there that they won't admit. So verse 18, he says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, gold tried in the fire. Get your money from God. If you got to work, work hard. Earn it. Earn your living. Go to sleep at night. And say, this is this money God allowed me to make. That thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eyes salve, that, thy, that thou mayest see. Here we go. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Many times people don't understand what love really is. Love means that I'm going to be in your case. We're in a fallen world. And if I don't love you, I'm going to let you live according to this fallen world. God so loved the world that he sent his son to be beat to death for us. We need to understand when you love someone, you're going to correct them. God chastens all that he loves. When you don't correct your child, the Bible says you hate him. Imagine if I lifted you up every Sunday. Praise God. It's a great day for you, Paul. You're going to excel and be magnificent. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Just continue to have positive reinforcement and you're going to make it. Amen. Let's take an offering. Make sure the children are having coffee and cake in the children's church. See, if I lift you up, I hate you. But if I lift up Jesus in you, then I love you. Because if I lift him up, you won't stumble. See, they don't believe in the cults. I get, I gotta throw a rebel, I gotta throw a, 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 an analogy. Go ahead. I've been in this church for quite some time. And I've said hi to some people in this church. And some Sundays I just don't happen to say hi to them. And it hurts their feelings. Wow. <laughs> They're human. See? When you when you don't lift up the flesh, if you don't continue to lift up the flesh, they're gonna leave you. And that's what's going on in these churches. All these messages are designed to keep those pews, those seats filled with flesh. But just like God is not moved by the exodus, neither am I. I mean, I'm concerned, but I'm not moved. Only one I'll, I'll chase after if my wife try to leave me. Amen. If she try to leave me, that's scripture. I can go after her. If all y'all gonna leave me, see y'all. I do a Moses. No, I do a, I do a Jesus. You know, y'all here? Now let's get let's get started. Now somebody say there's gonna be a falling away. Go to Matthew chapter twenty-four. This is Jesus. And the reason why I'm bringing this message to you because when, when God gave it to me, he said, listen, what's the sense in having a good church if they're not prepared? That's right. Come on. That's right. Amen. 
Go to this going Can I scare you just a little bit? Go to Second Thessalonians chapter two. Because we're in a day now where people come to church and they just want the candy. It's not Halloween. No trick or treat. You ready? Yes. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse ten. Talking about how the devil's gonna work against people or with people. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that what? Perish. There are people in the church that will perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Truth hurts. You ever had bad breath and they just uh, they let you go on like that? And then you went to the next person and like, man, your breath stank. And then your feelings got hurt. If somebody loved you, then you'd be like, oh, let me go brush my teeth. Right. Because they love not the truth, they perish. Verse 11, and this going to hurt you. Somebody say, I got to brace myself right now. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That's right. You need to tell God you love him because you don't know what he is saving you from. There are some people that don't want the truth and he's going to send them strong delusions so they can believe a lie. There are people living in sin behind pulpits, in pews, preaching, talking to God, doing everything that Christians do, not even knowing, not even knowing that they're under a strong delusion. Look around. You can see churches, you know they're not right with God, but they're functioning. They're fine. How could they be fine? God sent them a strong delusion because they love not the truth. When you tell somebody that's wrong and they say, okay, I'm sorry, that person will have mercy. But when you tell somebody they're wrong and they say, well, no, that's what you think. I got a relationship with God. God sent them strong delusion. There's only one way. Jesus died for the sins of the world. <laughs> for us to repent. So when there is no repentance, there's strong delusion. Anybody ever used to drink liquor? What did you hate if they with liquor? If they diluted it. You want to get drunk fast. 7,000 proof. And they put half water. What? I can't get out of my mind with this. Delusion. There are so many churches filled with disillusioned people. And you think that's your competition. Because that's the seduction, the seducing spirit. It makes you think that numbers, as far as I'm concerned, numbers is in the, in the Old Testament. The New Testament is the book of Acts. What's your numbers? What's your acts? Now go to third, second Timothy chapter three. Because you gotta understand, all I'm gonna do today is to encourage you to fight. Don't assume you're in. Fight. You know when somebody does the okey doke and switch up on you, doesn't it hurt? Right? You somebody be like, you know, they're real nice to you, and then they say, get the, get the behind me, Satan. What did I do? You gotta fight for this relationship with God. Just because God loves you doesn't mean that you just walk on in. You've been left here to do a job. I'm out of time. Second Timothy three, get in? Verse one. This know also. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. And we're there. Wow. You know people love themselves more than they love others. Yes, 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 yes. Most churches are filled with it. Wow. Jesus. Think, do your own math. How many people do you love? But you expect everybody to love you. Right, right, right. Amen. When you pick your phone up, you want to call everybody, help me. But you don't call anybody to ask them, do they need your help? We have become more lovers of sounds. We don't look for the hurt. We look for help because we hurt. Now go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I have to bring the hammer because many of us are living as if inflated Christians. Just because you can't pay your bill don't mean that's a bad thing. Sometimes it's a humbling thing. Being able to pay your bill sometimes put this up. Sometimes when you can't pay a bill, you be looking for other people hurt to help. But when you're rich, you be like, I can't lend it to you because I got to pay my next bill. <laughs> Get your own, like, ah, Chinese proverb. Ah, God give you the job to work. Ah, Chinese proverb. Ah, teach, let me give you a fish. I'm going to teach you to fish. Ah, ah. This ain't China. <laughs> the Bible says that they that have, give to them that don't have. No, 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 me Chinese proverb. Ah, I'll teach you to fish. No, Scripture says give to them that have. See, we, 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 we get it twisted. We have so much knowledge from other worlds that we forget God so loved the world that he gave. If you can't get a job, what are you supposed to do? Starve? Because you got some people that think if a man don't work, he don't eat. That's not what the Bible said. The Bible said if a man will not work. Big difference. Because you can't, you, you can't find a job sometimes, so you're supposed to eat. Well, you can't find a job, he ain't going to eat, brother. Understand the word. Y'all hear? And people with jobs be like, ah, oh, you ain't gonna get nothing now. Wow. Flesh. Wow. Y'all went there, second, second Thessalonians chapter 2. I got a few more minutes, I'm gonna finish. But I'm thank y'all that y'all stayed this morning. Y'all didn't fall asleep. I usually pick up snoozers. <laughs> second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Ready? Yes. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first. Wow. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. The church has to experience great falling away in order for you to recognize the devil. And I wrote the definition. The word falling away properly means to take a lapse. It's to slip up. It can even be unconscious or not deliberate. But you still missed up. You still missed a step. Right. Wow. Many times people think God's going to have mercy on them because they were stupid. Right, right. No. He sent his word mm -hmm. to deliver them from yeah. El Stupido. Yeah. <laughs> you remember when they used to have hurricanes and they would call them El Nino? Yeah. No El Stupido. Don't think God's going to get you out of trouble because you want to stay stupid. There's a mercy, but choosing to stay ignorant, there's no mercy. Because you love not the truth. Y'all hear and so the word falling away is actually the word apostasy. And when you begin to look at apostasy, God gives us warnings, but it's the fact that a person is rejecting Christ and they're putting man in its place. When you are the subject of your salvation, you are falling into apostasy. Amen. Because God is no longer lifted up. You're not lifted up. <laughs> but the average church won't see it like that. Because the pulpit is lifting you up. 
They're not trying to lift up Christ in you so you can overcome any circumstance. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He that is in the, he that is in the world. And I stole this from somebody. I don't know who, but I stole it. It said, a church that was once faithful, that loved and confessed the truth, that preached God's word, that disciplined those who walked in sin, falls away. Little by little. The truth is given away piece by piece. And discipline falls away. Finally, false teachers come into that church and the whole group departs together. Wow. All I got to do is stop talking against sin. Just little by little. Yes. And then invite a preacher in that won't preach about it. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, the whole church departed yeah. together. Yeah. Wow. Sure. Mm. How about children? Parents don't correct their children. Uh -huh. Don't teach their children to love God, to love God's word. Uh -huh. A little by little. Yeah. And before you know it, that child cannot teach their child. Right, right, right. Sure. And they all fall away. Yes, yes. Come on, help yes, me. Yes. Look at the generation that's out there now. They have no sense of right and wrong from God. No revealing. Thank you, Lord. Y'all hear? And so we got to get to a place where we recognize, you know what? It doesn't happen overnight. It's little by little. Replaces Christ and puts you as the head. Wow. The abomination of desolation. Right? When when you see him sitting in the temple as God. As God. That's the abomination of desolation. Yes. When you start to sit in this temple as God, how many times you think you're God? Every day. If we don't stay in God's word, if we don't stay in the Holy Ghost, if we don't stay in the love of God, we're gonna get we're gonna get inflated. Come on, hell. And then you got preachers making you think you God. Y'all hear? I'm a little afraid of y'all, but not completely. These people, I'm saying that that's that's negative, right? But I'm gonna do it anyhow. Like imagine if you if you're a white guy in a black neighborhood and you go, these people. <laughs> right? So I, I'm a preacher in this church. These people. <laughs> See, these people, they like a religion in which man is central. They want permissiveness. They do not see a, dis a distinction between the people of God and the world. Uh -huh. They think because you go to church, that it's enough. No. They give heed to seducing spirits, and the love of many wax cold because iniquity abounds. I'm going to do this. I'm out of time, but I'm going to do it. Watch this. It says, because the love of many wax cold. I mean, I did it backwards. Because of iniquity, because of sin, the love of many wax cold. Mm -hmm. let, me, let, me read it. let me say it the way the Bible says it. Because iniquity abounds, because you're in a society where there's a lot of sin, yes. your love is waxing cold. Mm -hmm. Because no one is correcting the sin. Right. 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 And your society tells you if you correct the sin, you're wrong. Right. And so now... You stop loving that's right. because you refuse to correct. Right. Wow. That's right. Wow. That's right. And you think that following society Jesus. is okay. Wow. But you don't even recognize you fell from love. Yes. Wow. Amen. Wow. Your love of God is what caused you to correct people. Right. Right. Yes. And now your society seduce you to fall back. Yes. Your love is waxing cold. Mm -hmm. yes. Because love corrects. You know, when you love somebody, you are aggressive in helping them. Come on. But when you want love, you want them to be aggressive in helping you. See, it's not about your love for me. It's my love for you that causes me to correct you. And when these pulpits don't correct you, they are showing you 
I really don't love you. I got you exactly where I want you. And if I hurt your feelings, that's not God. That's not love. There's a, there's a, um, there's a prevailing doctrine in, in all cults. And they say, you can do whatever you want as long as you don't hurt somebody. In Christianity, we start out at the door hurting you. Paul said, I warned you day and night that grievous wolves are going to come in not sparing the flock. He said, I'm glad my letter hurt you. I was sorry, but I'm so glad that it caused you to repent. I'm trying to help you. Every one of us are being seduced not to love. Not to say right is right and wrong is wrong. You're in a seducing spirit. You don't even know it. That's why you need the church. You need people in your church that talk about and talk against sin and talk about right living. You need it. Amen. Otherwise, you're going to be just like them. Amen. Can't help it, people. You right? See, the, the warning for the church, preach against sin. I said, Jesus came because you were full of it. You were, you and I were full of sin, and we have to repent of it. And when it rises back up, cut it out. Amen. Yeah, come on, come on. You ever heard of um, a split in? You know, some people they get split ends in their hair. Are you supposed to glue it back together? Cut it out. See, there's split ends all in the church. You all split. Well, I have family members like that, and you know, and I don't want to judge. You got split ends. You got split ends. Tell them it's right. You still can love them by telling them the truth. But if you don't tell them what's right, you run the risk of getting cut off at the end. Because now you gave it to a seducing spirit that won't confront truth. See, I'm trying to warn you. It's easy for me to tell you, God's going to bless you. But what if he's not going to bless you because you refuse to live a loving life? You can love sinners. You know, you can love anybody. But you're not supposed to drop your drawers. You're trying to live holy and you dating Harlot, Harlot Quinn. <laughs> wow. And she come into the room, oh butt naked. You be like, hey, I love you, but my drawers ain't going down. <laughs> Just because some of our children, our family members get caught up in sin. No, 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 I'm not getting in the bed with you. I love you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to wash you. I'm going to do anything for you. But one day you're going to see that I stood for what you want. <laughs> And when you get into your right mind, you're going to say, no, 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 I know the right way. I follow my lust. See, what we have in our society is you got people with, you know, it's, it's um, little Napoleon here. You have a church filled with PMS. <laughs> Women ain't excluded. They ain't not the only one with PMS now. See, this seducing spirit, it goes after your power, your money, and your sex drive. Because if you mess with anybody's money, they're going to go after you. You mess with anybody's power, they're going to go after you. If you mess with their sex drive, that's it. They're going to cut you off. <laughs> she said, I'm telling you right. I hope so. <laughs> you mess with power, money, and sex, that's it. They'll, they'll cut Jesus off. But Jesus tell you you can't sleep with that person. Well, I'm gonna go to another church that tell me I could. You can't have more power than God in your life. You all here. But see, but there's a delusion. When this delusion gets a hold of you, you don't even know it. It makes you exalted. I'd rather have a church filled with sinners than self-righteous, deluded people. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I know, I know. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. 
But least sinners know where they stand. But self-righteous, God-deceived people, they'll never, ever admit that they're wrong. You have somebody buck wild, fornicating, and you bring the hammer, and they go, oh, I'm sorry! But you bring a self-righteous, super fornicator, Lord, Lord, judge me. You joker, you don't even know what it means to be judged. It's, you know, it's, come on, let's stay with this. When you're deceived, you don't even know. That's why parents need to beat their children early. Spare the rod, spoil the child. You show you will, if you beat them, you'll save their souls from hell. Pastors are afraid that they're gonna be sued. Just take your Bible out, everybody. We're going to go to John 347. Dude, there is no 347, but they don't know. They don't come with a Bible. If every message is encouraging, then you, you definitely must be God. Come on. I'm just saying this because if we don't put the hammer to ourselves, who will? Paul said, I beat into subjection my own body. Hallelujah! Because you, you can't expect me to, to always try to correct you when there's an encouraging word, but you should be on you should be on your own P's and Q's. Yes. Woo! That's right. Yeah. That's right. Jesus! I one time when I was in college, I did a cram. I crammed for a test and I passed. The next time, I said, I'm going to cram again. Man, I fell! Cramming don't work. Knowing the answers work. I thought the cramming did it. I thought if I cram all this information in, into my brain, when it's time for the test, I'll get it. I fell, evangelist. I fell. The well, last time I crammed, I studied from the door. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost done. Oh, y'all want, want to see this one? Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now, this is going to scare everybody, especially me. Y'all don't mind me taking my time, right? Because what's the sense in going to church and going to hell at the same time? Jesus himself says, in the last days, many of these jokers are going to come to me saying, have I not prophesied? Have I not cast out devils? Have I not done this? And have I, he said, depart from me. Ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. I never, I never was intimate with you. You know, when you're intimate with a person, it's real. It's close. There's no room. If there was room, no, there's no intimacy. Well, that's how close God is to you. You move to the left, he can tell you, hey, don't go left. You move to the right, no, 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 don't go right. See, when there's real intimacy, you hear from him. He said, depart from me, I don't know you. When I said stuff to you, you was in another room. You were counting your money. You were checking chicks out. You might as well become a farmer as many chicks you got. I am as corny as they come. You You ready? It's amazing how men think that being a dog is okay. I think the average man that fornicates and that's like a whore, a whoremonger, I think they need to get beat. I don't know. Sorry. And then, how about the little harlot chick? You got so many spirits in you. Ralph. Alf. Now Beth. You know, everybody up in you. Everyone you lay with, stay with. They don't, their deposits don't ever leave. You remember when you were 13? I remember, I remember the dog. 
Here we go. I'm just trying to tell you something. Listen to me, people. We have a body. And it's called the temple. And a lot can live in there. Now, it's going to make some of you black people angry. Well, yeah, if you're black, you, you're going to get a little upset. Thank God you only have black. You ever heard of a chitlin? Them black people eat those pig intestines. Slave food. And them blacks be like, I love slave food. Other people are like, how could you eat that? Only reason why I'm trying to make a point, there is stuff inside of us that's making us sick. There are spirits in us making us sick, but we love it. I love liquor. I mm, love this stuff that's corroded my liver. I love tobacco. Mm, look at my lungs getting full. Come on. Oh, fornication. How many women can I eat? <laughs> These temples get filled with all kinds of things. And we don't recognize that we are polluting our souls. So listen, listen, if you if you the Bible says this, if any man is overtaken in a fault, even with your spirit, you restore such a one. Everybody in here has issues. But until we recognize I need to, I need victory over this issue, it's gonna seduce us to keep it. Oh, People try to play the, the black card. They fire me because I'm black. No, you don't work. Because <laughs> I'm a woman. Don't complain with me. Women are a blessing. I don't know about you, but women are about to run the world. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to do this, and I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say. I really don't care what you say. If you're a woman, you better, you better, and fellas, you better know a good woman. Because they're about to run the world. And it's their time, and God don't have a problem with it. First one to the two. Hey, yeah. come, come, on. Hallelujah. come on. Come on. Come on. There's neither male nor female in Christ. Yeah. Only in society is where they hate women. Yeah. Come on. Kingdom of heaven love women. Yeah. Come on. So if you know a good woman, you better hang out with her. Because now they, they prove it. I don't need a man. But men act like I need a woman. Well, so who's going to win? Come on. If a woman don't need a man and a man don't, and a man need a woman, somebody's gonna lose. Who's gonna be that man that think he need a woman? Because God's not because God's got respect to a person. Whether you're going to the bathroom sitting down or standing up. I left my message. Jesus, get me back to my message. First Timothy chapter four. Somebody said, I don't need to be seduced. But I'll tell you one thing that's going on with women that you got to be careful about because they don't need a man, they doing bad things. They doing bad things to replace men. Some of you women might know what I'm talking about. Some of you understand. First Timothy 4 verse 1. Come on, I got, oh, I'm out of time. Oh, I ran out of time. All right, oh, I can keep going. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So you see there's a falling away because seducing spirits are taking them that he can get. Verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Sexual immorality and diets. <laughs> you know, if you're going to go on a diet, shut up. Just stop eating. <laughs> Don't make it a religious pilgrimage. That's a seducing spirit. If you want to eat, eat the whole cow. If you want to eat everything, eat everything. But don't tell people, God don't like when you eat this and God don't like when you eat that. That's a seducing spirit straight out of hell. Oh. 
and telling people you don't need to marry. Look at our society. Nobody's getting married because society is saying it. Jesus. You got church folk acting married, but won't get married. How about who in here gonna buy a cow when you get the milk for free already? Come on, stop giving that man that milk. Yes. 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 Tell it. Tell it. You hear me? The reason why I'm saying that is you think of it as sin, but it's a seducing spirit to get people out of the church. And that's why so many people in these churches are filled with sin. And they don't know that it was a seducing spirit that got them to do those things. And as we close, go to Psalm 41, verse 11. I'm sorry I took all your time. But some of you are going to get this message. Some of you are going to make adjustments. Amen. Some of you are not going to run the church thinking that the church is your answer. Now you're going to realize Jesus is my answer. He's my answer. He's the only way to keep me. And Psalm 41 verse 11 says this. By this I know that thou favorest me. Because my enemy does not triumph over me. See, many of you think God's favor is your money. Wow. I got a job. God's favored me. No, no, no. This, by this I know God favors me because my enemy does not triumph over me. Amen. Rich McDonald doesn't bum rush past the rich. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My greatest enemy is the old me. Sometimes I confront him. And when I beat him, Paul, then I know God favored me. But when God allowed, or when when, the, when my old man beats me, I'm not a favor. Many of you need to recognize your old man is filled with hatred towards you. The old you wants you back. Anybody here ever dated the wrong person? You're not going to leave me. <laughs> you saw that movie Face Against Things you're not going to leave me she's crazy no you're crazy because you didn't know see you know, the old man was, was created and was birthed from sin the devil and you just going to up and leave me go to a holy church live and love God and God's people no I'm going to I'm going to stealthily remind you of you. Wow. You're going to hear the music in church. It's going to remind you. I'm not going to say it sounds like club music. But sooner or later you're going to start the boogie. A little at a time. You don't have to go to church. Don't take all that. Stay home. Stay up late Saturday. Put on W Kill LS. Before you know it, you start listening to little worldly music. You start swaying. And before you were, before you were going like this, praise the Lord, it's all up and down. Now it's hoo-hoo. Now it's left and right. Before you know it, you got a little, a little boogie in you. And it's not you. It's the old you. And now God's favor is lifting because the old you is taking advantage of you. Wow. But when you're close to God, he will let none of your enemies get a hold of you. Why do I act like that? Why don't I read? Why don't I pray? The old you hates you. And you're spending too much time with the old you. You mean to tell me my not reading is the old me? Yes. Before you were saved, you never read. <laughs> Before you were saved, you didn't pray to God and speak in tongues. But the old you was like, come on, let's just relax. We saved. We going in. Let me read. Stare into space. Maybe get a job at NASA. Just keep staring up into space. You didn't ask him. Stop. I can't. I'm going to teach you how to fight against your old man. Put on the new man. Put on Christ, which is renewed in the knowledge of him. You find broken people and fix them. Amen. As long as you're home, ain't nobody to help. That's right. That's right. You go out your house and you find somebody broke. My Lord. And you say, well, do you need help? 
And if they say no, say good. Anybody help? Do you need help? Right. Uh -huh. No? Okay, now you go home and rest. Only an evangelist would clap. You see that, Tim? I gotta close. Y'all here? But I'm glad you're coming. Go to Matthew chapter 24. All these crickets. How many believe you're saved? I think the Bible says work out your own with fear and trembling. You can't act like you arrived. Paul's a businessman. If he act like he's not going to go out there and get an Excel, he's going to be hungry. If you act like you're saved and don't do something to advance the kingdom, where's your joy? Y'all there? I did that to get you there. Matthew 24, verse 14. This is Jesus. In this, in this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. So if you think Jesus is coming back or the world's coming to an end without the gospel being preached to everybody, you're sadly mistaken. There's a people he's raising up now that's a go ye people. They're the generation that says, I'm tired of this world. Let's get Jesus back. Let's get the Lord on the scene. Let's go to every nation and tell them about him. It's the only way he's going to come back. Because if he comes back and you're not ready, you're not going home. But if you are out busy telling people about him, Maranatha, come now, Lord Jesus. Some people be like, I don't want Jesus to come right now. I haven't been married yet. Well, when you get to heaven, you're not going to be married. I don't know what you're thinking about. Uh, that's saying for married person, but that's not fair. Okay, go get married next week. Some of y'all wait, wait for the wrong reasons to get married. Jesus. If you're going to get married, make sure you fall in love and you got money to pay your bills. Because your marriage will go right out the window if you can't pay a bill. I should have stayed with my mother. I should have stayed with my mother. Yeah. <laughs> you're right here? Verse 42. I'm out of time. I'm 10 minutes past my closing. <laughs> Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord does come. My father used to work in a laundromat on a hundred and, like between 120th and 119th Street and 1st Avenue, the Patsy's Pizza. And I used to live on the 14th floor, project, like an eagle. We could see him leave the laundromat. And we know by the time it takes to get up to the house, we had to clean that house up. But if we were not looking, and he came in that house and it was dirty, that was it. Everybody got beat. So one, I would look, I remember one time, forgive me that God has given this to me, these, my brothers are not here. I didn't tell. I wanted to, oh. <laughs> I saw him coming, but I did not tell him. He tore them up. And he beat me too. I said, that's it. I said, I said, I, I, I'm not going down with these guys no more. Because my parents, were, they, they, they were equal opportunity employers. They beat everybody. When the judgment of God comes, everybody's going to get it. Everybody's going to get it. That's why you don't want to be here. He said, therefore, be also ready for in such an hour you think not, verse 44, the Son of Man cometh. He's coming. Somebody say, he's coming. He's coming after them. He ain't coming after me. When he comes, he takes me back. And now let's close. Y'all ready? I know you're enduring one hour. Can you not wait 15 more minutes? Like I said earlier, when you reject Christ being lifted up, you, you, you have now replaced him. And when you're in a church and all they preach about is your well-being, something's wrong. 
Something's wrong. It's not about your well-being because the Bible says that you're complete in Him. And the works have been finished. And we're supposed to grow up into Him. So if you're still the focus, something's wrong. I'm telling you now, if you're the focus, something's wrong. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's got to be about Him. He is the only safety for sinners. Sooner or later, the, the, I forgot his name. The great Donovan's gonna run out of a dance move. Right. Sooner or later, Saul gonna stop and Donovan gonna stop. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, yes. Pastor Lenny gonna be, come on! Because shouts gonna stop sooner or later. And if all your focus was on them, what you gonna do? Because we are in a dangerous time where church messages is about you. It's never about you. But to keep money flowing and you content to flow it, God put you in it. I'm not saying this to be negative. I'm saying this to be positive. You only go to a beauty salon that beautifies your ugliness. You go in horrible, it will come out beautiful. Well, you have no problem, right? You have no problem paying. And so sometimes you come to a church horrible, but leave beautiful and pay for it. So you think. If we leave not looking like him, we're as horrible as we came in. Lay at the same church, wretched, naked, poor, Blind and miserable and not even knowing. Just because you sow the seed and you're going to be rich, are you going to say you have need of nothing? Come on. It's time to put on Christ. It's time that we start looking like who we're supposed to. So here, now I go back to the Revelation because I, I, I got too excited an hour ago. I forgot to finish. Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Maybe I'll just stop here. Charles said, no, keep going. As many as I love, Revelation 3, 19, as many as I love, I what? I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. How many people here are zealous to repent? Amen. No, many people. People be like, no, you got to convince me I was wrong. Nah. Mm. Prove that. I don't agree with you. He said, be zealous to repent. Zeal is a blind passion. If God said I'm wrong, hey, whoa, whoa. what what I gotta do to fix it? He told us to be zealous to repent. When you have stubbornness, switchcraft, iniquity, idolatry. And when you're stubborn to repent, it's a devil. Come on, come on. That's it. That's it. Pastor says fornication is wrong. You go like this. I'm sleeping with Joey tonight. I don't care what that pastor said. Devil! You know why they can laugh in this church? Because they ain't got nothing. Had them. Got rid of them. So we can laugh because we had every devil in the Bible. That was a good place to do a little bit. If we do an X, if we do an X service, we have X everything up in here. You would think this was a sci-fi church. We call it the X Files. <laughs> X murder. X prostitute. X pimp. X drug dealer. X embezzler. We're an X file church. Go to the other churches, we all current members. Remember the guy at the hair club for men? I'm not only the president, but I'm a client. Let's get out of here. Oh my goodness. You gotta make fun of it because it's gonna hurt. When you see these people who think that they're walking with God, walk away from you. 
because they love not the truth. Wow. There are people that love messages that talk about people. Yes. How in the world can you like yes. people get talked about? Yes. You don't love the truth. Here we go. Watch this. All right. You're like movie theater. Please silence your cell phones. Verse 20. Ready? Now you're going to like this. Andrew, watch this. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to into him and will sup with him and he with me. See, the bootleg churches think that this is Jesus talking to sinners. When you go out witnessing, you tell them the Lord is knocking on the door of your heart. Yo, bootleg joker. This is Jesus knocking on the church that put him out. This church put him out. They said, we got money. We don't need real Jesus up in here. All right. The church that puts Jesus out, he's still knocking on the door. Verse 22, he that heavy is, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And now we're going to close. I'm, oh, man, I'm 30 minutes past bedtime. That's, just hold on, right there. Go to Ephesians, what did I say? Go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. And you got to go fast. Those of you that have a Bible or those of you that are faking, just turn your newspaper. And those of you that have a tablet, just, you know, just exit out your Facebook post. God sees <laughs> Pastor on fire. Where you on Facebook? Tell him Pastor on fire. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. Church was lit. What? What? I'm going to go time all your Facebook posts. Come on, make it. Okay, I got to make sense out of this as we close. See, there's a stature, there's a growth that has to take place in order for you to escape this temptation. Ephesians 1.23 says this, It has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over, head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now I want to say this in English. You, as a part of the body of Christ, is full with everything that God is. That's it. As a part of the body of Christ, you're full of everything God is. But he's the head. Go to, Ephesians, go to chapter 3, verse 19, verse 16. Ephesians 3, 16. That he will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit and the inner man. God needs you to have inner strength. Your gut's got to be strong. You can't be strong in your emotions. You can't be strong in how you feel about yourself. Yes, right. Come on. You don't need to be self-esteem. We need God-esteem. Right. <laughs> because when somebody hurts your feeling, if you're not full of God, you're going to attack them. Yes. Why are your pastor always talk against sin? Well, because somebody carried it in. My Lord. My Lord. All of us, listen, we might all be saved, but not all of us clean. You know, my favorite analogy is when Jesus said, I chose 12 of you and one of you the devil. In this church, they'd be like, I know who it is. I can see Naima now, I don't want to say nothing. You know, Pastor, I don't want to say nothing. And Darlene would be like, well, you know, uh, what's that word she like to use? It's convoluted, you know. But, uh, Charles would be like, stick to your neighbor and say, neighbor. That's you, neighbor. <laughs> we, all, we all got our own jargon in here. But this church, the real church said, is it I? If I believe this with anything today, ask God, are you being deceived? Ask him. Don't ask me. I'm hoping that the word is bringing you to a place where you can at least want to examine your convictions. But you got to ask. I ask God. 
I examine myself all the time. I want to make sure I'm in the faith. You know how painful it's going to be for me to send you to hell? Verse 17. Verse 16. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ might dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded where at? In love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passive knowledge that you might be full with the fullness of God. Without knowing God's love, you can't be full of God. What's your name again? You're Brandon's brother, right? You're Donovan. Come over here. Now watch this. Now he goes to this church. He's a really nice guy. I ignore him a lot. Come over here. I mean, it's good for him. You know, if I pay too, too much attention to him, then you think it's all about him. Y'all wasn't here for this whole service? Now, there will come a time where I have to prove my love for him. And if I'm successful, he'll never forget me. But if I fail that test, he's going to believe that he's not supposed to pass it either. Wow. Be not many masters, for in all things you will receive a greater condemnation. Y'all think it's easy loving you? It really is. Because I spend time with the one that loves you most. When I spend time with God, I will change these messages in a heartbeat. Come on, 40 more dollars. Need a new pair of shoes. Katina said, my shoes are old. If I got to get money out of you, something is wrong. I need to get the hell out of you. So somebody say, when I, when I know God's love, I'm full, I'm full of God. Thank you. Ephesians 4. Go to chapter 4. We're, gonna, we're almost, we're almost going to get out of here. Verse 11. Some of you are going to be happy about this. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all, somebody say we all, we till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, Unto a perfect man. Yes. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Yes. Not perfect as you are. Yes. Perfect as he is. Yes. Yes. We have to become mature in Christ. Yes. We have to grow up unto him. Amen. We have to live in such a way that everyone knows that we love them. Yes. 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 You're not going to love people without practice. Yes. 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 Still here. Yes. And he said the church yes. that is their job to bring you into the unity of the faith to the knowledge of the Son of God so you can be that perfect man. Yes. If you don't know the Son of God, you won't know if you're right or wrong. Right. Yeah. Teach it right, Pastor. I teach my daughter right from wrong from the door. Amen. And as she is getting older, she is able to tell people what's right and what's wrong. Right. Why? My daddy told me. Right. Amen. The only way you're going to know that you're perfect is when you know the Son of God. Amen. When you know Jesus, you'll know right from wrong. Amen. But these sinners are, these sinners have no clue who he is. You will never walk in sin around Jesus. This seducing age, I don't know where they think Jesus is for sin. Where do they get it from? Jellyfish preachers. There was a time when they knew right from wrong. Because every preacher spoke against it. Yes. Every preacher spoke against sin so they knew right from wrong. Now Jelly Jack is a preacher. Well, it'll take all that. I know that Jesus is love. Okay. 
I'm trying to help us. Because we're all being seduced. Your job is making sure that you don't say certain things, and that's fine. You don't want to lose your job. Society is making sure you don't say certain things. That's fine. You don't want to get thrown in jail. But when your church is telling you not to say anything against sin, now that's a problem. That's a you gonna go to hell because that's the falling away. Y'all hear? I don't gotta preach at work. I don't gotta preach at streets. I got to preach in my house. My family, got, we got to go home. We got to go to heaven. Amen. That's it. Amen. Ready? Verse 14. That we henceforth... I'm going to keep it out of time. It's y'all. I should be able to finish this message in 15 minutes. It's y'all. Here we go. You ready? That till we all come to the unity of faith of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ. How big is Christ? That's your measure. Not a little Jesus. The full measure of Jesus. How would Jesus act in your body? Listen to me. I'm going to have, I'm going to have three of you. Everything that God is, is in you. So when you act up, God will be acting up. Jesus threw over the money changers' tables. Why? Because he was full of God. When you just let sin just linger and linger, it's going to get on you. I, you know, I was in, a, I was in my car, and um, you know, it wasn't their fault. My daughter had got some perfume, and she sprayed it, and I flipped out. Rolled all the windows down, it was like 10 degrees outside. See, I can't afford to have it get in me. See, my lungs fill up easy. What smells good to others is poison to me. You think you can sin, I can't. I can't even be, I can't even be around it. See, if you don't have that testimony, you got seduced. The Bible says concerning God, the heavens are unclean in his sight. Yes. Wow. He said he, 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 he charges angels with folly. Mm -hmm. Nothing is clean around God. Yes. Wow. So when you stay close to him, everything is dirty. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Yes. Yes. See now, Prophet Tyler, why, is, why am I not getting a response? Mm -hmm. Because you know you're infected. Right. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Sister Katina. Yes. We don't recognize that we all get dirty because we're down here. But you don't have to stay dirty. Right. If you ever take, you know, anybody ever took a bath like, yeah. like with soap and water? Yeah. You know where you put the soap? Mm -hmm. Where the dirt was. Right. <laughs> Everywhere you felt there was dirt, you put the soap. <laughs> Some areas more than others. Oh, when you're in this earth, you know where there's dirt. Yes. You know we got seducing spirits and doctrines and devils. You better put some dirt on. I mean, put some soap on there. Jesus. I know I'm preaching right. I got Eugene rocking. Eugene is usually like the rock of Gibraltar. He don't be moving. You from France too? Eugene is like picture perfect. He like the Mona, the, the Mr. Lisa. making you laugh because I know some of you are dirty. Some of you are seduced. Some of you got so much of this world in you and you're really danger to yourself and to the people around you. Somebody can sit right in front of you and be like, it's alright. Others, you should be screaming. Ah! Some of you guys to see a naked woman instead of throwing on your coat, you start getting undressed. Some of you women wear pants so tight that if you fart Monday, the smell will come out to Friday. I don't know what happened to me. I gotta go. Think about it. I'm still saved. Here we go, ready? Verse 14. 
that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning crafting his way by the lying way to, to deceive. Preachers that are full of seduction and deception know where there's no word. They'll come up with okie doke and you'll be like, oh, praise God, that's a revelation. No, that's a deception. And because you don't love the truth, you can't tell. Wow. Wow. I love my wife, and she loved me. And if you ever come to my house, you'll wonder sometime. Because she don't play, and I don't play. I don't, you know, no, you don't, I don't get to act in the flesh. I don't have that luxury. And I got her little, her little daughter now. I, I said something under my breath, and they busted me. And then my daughter said something. She said, oh, you got you to gotta get caught before you repent? And I said, all right, all right, I repent. And yeah, she, she, she took it even further. She said, what if somebody saw that? Oh, I like my house. She didn't say, it's all right, Daddy. No, she didn't say, it's all right, Daddy. They both went at me. You know why? Because I get them all the time. Thank you, Jesus. But I don't have a problem with it. I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather have God. Rebuke me, then Satan comes with me. The greatest gift in our churches today will be men, real men, not neutered. Not men that go around, praying the Lord. Real men that go like this. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Men that would trade their Sunday praises of NFL wow. to praise God. You. Pastor, you hit a home run when you told me I was wrong. Glory! Nobody was bold enough to tell me that. That's a real man. And some of these pastors act like a man come up to him and say, you say something against fornication, they're going to bust you in your head next Sunday. <laughs> you keep asking my, my, my wife for some money I'm coming up in this church no offerings today men are real men put the necessary let me leave I grew up in a male centric home Eight bro seven brothers one father you know had a mother so we, we woofed our way if you couldn't fight you didn't win the church is so supposed to be filled with men that can fight. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. Men that walk away. I know that's right. That's right. Come on. Fight, fellas. Fight. Why let these women gang up on me? I went to one church. I thought it was kind of cool. It was a black church. And he put all the men in the front. I'm like, I like this. My flesh. <laughs> then I looked. I said, these guys don't belong down here. I never went back. Because you can do stuff for the flesh. Because right. oh, yeah. men can carry some flesh. Oh, yes. Especially those deacons, right? They got them bad jackets on. <laughs> Why does the finger go up? <laughs> the only reason why I'm talking bad is because you got to understand something. God watches all of us. Yes, he does. If I if I stop preaching against sin, my candlestick was taken out. That's what he said. He said, if you don't repent, I'm going to remove your candlestick. Which means I'm going to remove the light from the pastor. Wow. Tim, I'm going to help him because I ran out of time. I only took 30 minutes over. Thank God for this church. Thank God you guys are knowing me Because some people think they have 15 minutes and that's it, I got to go. When a pastor doesn't repent, God takes his light. Wow. Doesn't take the light from the church because they never had one. Uh -huh. wow. Wow. He takes their light and because they don't know it's missing, wow. things keep going on. That's right. Wow. That's right. Good word. You're talking right. Wow. 
I'm not losing my life. Hallelujah. I have a good reputation in this church. I do. I will turn on you in a minute. I'm blessed. Right, Lama? All you that I have ever rebuked. Am I not a blessing? Oh, yeah. I will. I will. I will. I will, I will, I will make you think you were never saved. Tell me you don't know me that way because you don't get close to me, but if you get close, I'm going to get you. Thank you, Lord. Today, by dirty. Because I have sinned more than all of y'all, so I can recognize when you start now. Oh, my God. You heard me. Why do you think I'm good at helping you? Because I did it. I was the worst. It's getting quiet. Who that is forgiven much, loves much. Yes. Yes. People get mad at me when I don't let them talk. Why should you talk? Right. That we henceforth be no more children. And here's my, my, my last one. And we're closing here forever. That's my seventh time saying it. Go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Anybody got anything from today? Yes. yes. How are you going to fight against deception? Amen. Yes. Listen to me. It's, it's all around Amen. us. But you got to fight. Oh, yes. I wouldn't see you get there. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. But when lest any man spoil you through philosophy in vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Mm. Now, did you know, I found out today the definition of philosophy, and I never knew this. Philo, love. Mm -hmm. Philosophy is the love or the pursuit of wisdom. People can seduce you with the pursuit of wisdom. Wow. Making you think you're something that you're not. When they start telling you how great you are and all that God has done for you and what you now can do for you. That's like the wisdom of men. And he says this, and not after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. If anybody's going to give you wisdom, it should be about Christ in you. <laughs> if I don't focus on Christ in you, I'm going to puff you up. And if I puff you up, you are going to get so inflated that you're going to think it's all about you. And when it's time to tell you no, you're going to want to kill me. People leave churches when you start talking about sin. Those are the ones that's supposed to have left. I went, you know, I, I, I where's Vince? Vincent cut my hair. And I was mad at Vincent. Because he cut off more hair than I had. Because he knew what he was doing. Me, I kept those spots, those big blotches. He said, they got to come down in order for it to look right. See, if the word of God doesn't cut you, you're going to have blotches all over the place. So, philosophy. It's elevating human wisdom over the wisdom of God. It's loving one's thoughts at the expense of God's word. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Because see, see, you know, how many here are human? You're human, right? Eugene, you're human, right? How many of you have thoughts? All the time. I think God's okay with that. I think God loves you enough that he will fix that. No. He tells you, stop it. He's not going to fix stuff you're supposed to stop. And why, why don't we want this philosophy? Verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10, and ye are complete in him. Which is the head of all principality, power, and power. Principality and power. Now watch this. Come on, stand to your feet. I told you we were closing. How come y'all keep sitting? An hour after I said something. You ready? Now this is going to be good. I'm sorry. 
Aunt, Angie, right? I know it's the first time here. I, I preached three days. But I don't know if Jesus, Jesus might come back today. But at least you left on a high. Right? Come Monday, if you come back on a Monday, it's, it's, it's messed up. I'd rather him come back on a Sunday because most of y'all make it. Monday, some of y'all gave up. Now look what it says. And this is what you got to understand. You're complete in him. And he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Everything that God is, everything that God is, is in Jesus. And you're complete in him. So the problem is this. If I'm complete in him, why are you trying to encourage me? See, this, the seduction. If it's all about him and me being complete in him, why is the message so me-centric? I'm going to get you there. I'm going to get you there. I'm going to stay right here. If I'm complete in him, and he is the fullness of God. Why is all my messages about me? Why is the preacher trying to lift me up? Because that's the age that we're in. I hope you can hear me. We're in a very seductive age where Satan is able to make messages replace Jesus. This is a worldly carnal saying. The guy said like this. If I don't worry about it, then who will? You don't have to worry. But here's the altar call. And I believe I'm getting permission. That's what I was really waiting for. I wasn't waiting for you guys. I was trying to figure out how to actually close. God's going to give us permission to get cleansed. Some of you don't even know that you were seduced. You just thought it was a good message. You just thought that church, that pastor, that preacher was really right on time. That's exactly what I'm going through. But don't you always go through that? Aren't the best messages in church the ones about you? The ones that encourage you? But if he be lifted up, if he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto me. I know it's a, lot, it's a deeper message than many of us can understand. But we're breaking the web of seduction. You hear me? We're breaking the web of seduction because it's so subtle. I hear God saying, I'm releasing you from the snare of the fowl. And those of you that, that will tell the truth, that you can, can honestly say, I did not know I was being deceived. And I want to get free. Then those those that can admit that, then you come to this altar. If you're already free, stay where you are. But if you know that there was some seduction that you're not aware of, then you get to that altar.